Hi, I'm Richard, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to ace your pre-recorded video interview. Now, since the pandemic, pre-recorded video interviews have become the standard. This is an interview where you'll be asked a question on screen and then it will likely cut to blank and you'll have between 30 seconds and three minutes, usually one minute to one and a half minutes to answer that question. I'll talk a little about Kira Prep today because Kira Prep talent is used by uh, UCL, Imperial and Oxford, but there are many other similar technologies that all work in the same way. So this video will help all of you. Now we have a whopping 93% success rate of getting both top students into the top academic universities such as Imperial, UCL and Oxford, but also helping students to land lucrative jobs in finance, consultancy and law. That's 93% compared to the average acceptance rates, which can range anywhere from 16 to 66% depending on the application. And today, we are going to go through a load of tips to help you smash this very new sort of modern interview. Now, tip number one is the most important. Smile, smile, and smile again for the camera. Now, they use AI to look at how positive you're being before deciding whether or not to review this with a real person. There is some argument that if you just keep smiling and talking at the camera, you might get lucky and someone might not even review it and you could get in. Now, I wouldn't risk that, but I do say in this unusual interview, how you say it is more important than what you say. So look at the camera, keep on smiling and keep a positive tone no matter what comes up. That is the most important thing for this interview. Now, tip number two, is just keep on going. You will be asked some tricky questions and we'll go through a few examples in this video today, but you mustn't stop. No matter what they ask you, just keep going. It's fine to stutter and stammer and be a little bit outside of your comfort zone. They're trying to do that. The test is can you keep persevering? And if it goes terribly and you completely stop, just laugh, smile, and persevere. You'll actually come across as more human and more likable, and they'll see that you're a fighter when it comes to these sorts of questions. Number three, never go negative. There are all sorts of traps in these video interviews. In an in-person interview, whilst negativity is still not recommended, you can sort of pull it off with a little bit of charisma and charm and context. But in these pre-recorded videos, do not go negative. Specifically, the pitfall they love to ask is, why are you better than another candidate? Why should we give you a place and not someone else? Ignore the negative element, it's a trap. There is no way to put someone else down without making yourself look catty and therefore not as strong. Just focus on yourself. Look forwards, not sideways, and talk about positivity. You can even ignore the second part of the question and say, well, this is why I'm fighting for my place and why I think I'd be a brilliant addition to your team or your cohort. Now, the next tip is to make sure that you have a good background, lighting, and Wi-Fi. If you, uh, 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 but if you do not have good Wi-Fi, it's frustrating and they're just gonna go on to another candidate. Make sure you are somewhere with perfect Wi-Fi. Kick out your little sister if she's internet gaming and make sure that any family or friends or maybe halls know that you're gonna be recording this. I actually recommend Arsenal to go take a walk around the block and not come back until you are finished. If you're unlucky and the doorbell does go, just laugh it off in the interview and keep on going. It's also really important to have a great background. I move my entire flat around when I'm doing these sorts of interviews or conference calls from my home to make sure I just have a plain background, something not too distracting. It's okay to have a book, but make sure you look at what's on your bookshelf. There are all sorts of funny videos on the interview of people who didn't look at what was on their bookshelves. If you have a plant, make sure it's watered and healthy, but really it's fine to just have a plain white background, whatever the walls are, nothing that distracts away from yourself. Really important bonus tip, lighting. Put a ring light if you have one, but if you don't, get every lamp and light yourself up like a Christmas tree. It just looks better having production values than being a dark and dingy room and gives you more of an impact than it probably should and helping. 
Now, before I go into types of questions, this is just a small number of, we have over 57 tips, which is why we have such a high success rate. Of course, you can work with myself or one of my amazing team, and we will do all sorts of tips and tricks to try and put you off. We'll also record you in these, time you, and give the feedback to you immediately on how you can improve, as well as a mock. Make sure you do a mock, but doing a mock with a professional is the best way of doing this. Now, the individual tips. Just quickly, there are four different types of question that you might be asked. For any interview, you need a solid answer as to why you're there and why you are strong. I suggest writing down two or three bullet points you want to cover and practice this in front of the mirror. Open up something like a Zoom, record yourself, and watch yourself back until you are happy. It's great when we get questions we expect. It can set us up well. Although I will say on Kira Prep, they quite often don't ask you for one of these questions, probably to try and put you off, maybe just because it's randomly generated the questions you get. Number two, the other sort of question you're near guaranteed to get is an experience question. These are often called the core competency questions in professionals, and it usually goes something like this. Tell us about a time when you disagree with someone on the team and what you did about it. Or maybe this. Tell us a time when you displayed leadership at work. It could also be your greatest strengths or greatest weaknesses. Remember not to go negative. All of these questions can be answered in the same way. And I recommend the STAR technique. Situation, task, action, and result. But the trick in a one minute question and why you need to time yourself is most people spend 40 to 50 seconds just setting it up and get distracted and don't actually answer the question. In one line, situation and task. When I was at KPMG last year, I was asked to prepare a presentation to pitch to the director. Great. Now the action. Make yourself the hero of your story. What did you do? How did you help your team to resolve this challenge? And importantly, the result. Can you quantify it? Did you do such a great job that you were invited back for a future job? Did you do such a great job that they end up winning that pitch overall? Was there an amazing review you got from someone? Or did a colleague just say, well done? If in doubt, just say what you learned from the experience. Fantastic technique. Also, you don't have to have loads of different experiences. I recommend just having one or two that you can adapt to any sort of question. Your greatest strength can also be a time that you achieve something. And if you have some sort of negative you know, teammate or boss that causes you a bit of difficulty, you can talk about them and how you overcame that being able to adapt it. Don't try and learn 20 different examples. It's too much to remember. Just do one well. Now, number three is the semi-technical question. You're unlikely to get asked a hardcore mathematical problem on the spot, but they are increasingly asking things such as, what's an algorithm? What's blockchain if you're doing some sort of data course? They might ask you, how would you spend 10 million pounds? What would you invest it in? These are opportunities to demonstrate your knowledge relevant to the course, and you do need to know something about the subject that you're studying or about to work on in a degree in order to do so. These are the most difficult questions to prepare, and it's really important that you've got some jargon and look at past paper questions so that you can prepare for these. The fourth type of question I'm just going to call random. These are questions designed to put you on the spot. Recently. What would you take if you were deserted on a desert island? A ball or a book? Do you prefer travel or study? There's not a right or a wrong answer to these. There's usually an expected one. Talking about the book is probably more academic than the ball if you're applying to a top course such as Oxford. But it's perfectly great to talk about the ball and how you've done amazing sporting achievements and shown leadership. These questions are meant to be difficult and put you on the spot. And it's just testing that you can smile, keep on talking, and try and get something in about yourself. Now, that's just a tiny amount of the 57 tips that we have, as well as all of our massive question bank of hundreds of past questions for these pre-recorded video interviews. If you'd like to work with a professional such as myself, please do get in contact using the information on the screen below. We also love to help everybody. So if you've got a budding question, put it in the comments below. Or share some of the weirdest questions that you have managed to overcome in your own experiences. You can also read the full Kira Prep Guide online, which will be linked into this video. And if you found this helpful, please do like and subscribe. Best of luck. We're rooting for you.